This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. Got an unsymmetrical bending example here for you. Another word for this type of problem is a biaxial bending, bending about both principal axes. Got a the section that we're going to look at. This is a acting as a beam is this channel section that I've got outlined in black and it's five inches tall five inches wide and I've done another video where I calculate Y bar and IX I bar X prime for that shape and I've calculated these section properties IX is 30.31 inches to the fourth I bar Y prime about that vertical axis centroidal axis is 43.08 inches to the fourth on this section, we're applying this um, moment of 50 kip inches, and it is acting down to the right at a 3, 4, 5 slope. It's just a vector, so that gives it an MX component and an MY component. So I've also located the neutral axis over here on the far left. It's 2.038 inches down from the top. Now the textbook has this formula, 617, that it uses for biaxial bending. But this formula is really, I don't like it, it's heavily dependent upon sign convention and the direction of moments the, and the direction of y and z distance. It also is, it only applies or it's written to apply to a z and a y axis. So oftentimes we're going to have bending about other axes of different combinations so I say don't use this formula because it's really becomes plug and chug and you can get lost in just the sign conventions and come up with answers that look right instead I prefer to take what I to do what I've got here outlined in blue I want to say ignore the signs of the moment and the y or z distances in those formulas. Instead, let's break it up. Let's focus on whether or not we got ten tension or compression and where the tension or compression is. So we want to break each problem into two parts, bending about one axis, bending about another axis. Step two, we want to determine whether or not we have tension or compression on each half or side of the cross section of the neutral axis. That takes care of the signs and combines what direction the moment is and what direction the distance is, whether positive or negative, from the neutral axis. This is a much more practical approach and it's much less chug, plug and chug. Step three, calculate the absolute values of stress based on my over i where y is the distance it's not really a y distance it's a distance to the neutral axis from the point where you're taking the bending stress and then in step four you bring them all together and you combine the stresses per the information that you determined in two whether step two whether or not you have tension or compression and where that is so Let's start off by looking at this moment of 50 kip inches and see what the MX and MY, the component, moment about the x-axis and the y-axis. Well, it's just a vector at a 3, 4, 5 slope. Therefore, draw those parallel lines, and I say MX is to the right, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is direction of rotation. Its value is three-fifths from the slope relationship, three-fifths of 50 or 30 kip inches. What's more important is the direction of rotation. I use the right-hand rule and I see that that's the direction of rotation from the top, which is going to be tension, towards the bottom, which is going to be in compression. I do the same thing for MY say it's that component MY and it's equal to four-fifths of 50 or 
or 40 inch gips, gip inches. Its direction of rotation from the right hand rule is from the right to the left, towards the left. So that's going to produce tension on the right side, compression on the left side. I'll transfer that information down to the next step. Now I want to break this thing into two parts. And part 2A, as I call it, is going to be bending about the x-axis, which is that x prime neutral axis, horizontal. And I determined above that I have a moment in that direction which is pulling away from the top, so I'm going to have positive sigma x here, and I'm going to have negative sigma x on the bottom, compression. That moment is 30 kip inches. Let's look at case 2b, which is bending about the y-axis, which I determined up the step above that's a moment in this direction from the right towards the left which produces negative sigma y or compression on the left side positive sigma y on the right side the moment's 40 kip inches so now I've determined where I, where I have on which side of the neutral, each neutral axis, compression and tension. I can move on to step three, which is calculating the absolute value of those stresses. Okay, the formula for this is that s sigma is my over i, where m is the moment, y is the distance to the neutral axis, and i is the moment of inertia about the neutral axis. So that's the only thing that's going to vary in these things is y, the distance to the neutral axis. My tablet doesn't seem to want to cooperate and let me write. It's the distance to the neutral axis. Okay, for sigma x, I've determined that the moment from the step above is 30 kip inches. The I from above is 30.31 inches to the fourth. In both of the, in the, every case I'm just multiplying by the distance to the neutral axis Y, which is in inches. I've got kip inches squared on the top divided by inches to the fourth, so that gives me kips per square inch, which is what I want because it's a stress. And so I can just express this as plus or minus, which I determined from step two, 0.99y KSI. Similarly, for bending about the y-axis, I have that same my over i. In this case, it's my and iy. The numbers are 40 kip inches for m. The moment of inertia about the y-axis from up here is 43.08. And both those, t in every, every case, that's multiplied by the y distance or the distance to the neutral axis. So this can be simplified as plus or minus, depending on whether or not I got compression or tension, is 0.9285 y KSI. So now I've got an expression for sigma x and sigma y just based on the distance to the neutral axis. Now let's look at the specific case where we want to figure out the stresses at five different points. In case A, well let me first let me transfer my uh, stress information and the sign of it down to this drawing number four. I have positive sigma x on the top, negative sigma x below the neutral axis. On the left side of the neutral axis, I have negative sigma y. On the right side, I have positive sigma y. 
Okay, so I can just look real quickly at the quadrants, and I can see at sigma at A, I have positive sigma X and negative sigma Y. What I need to know is the distance to the neutral axis from point A to each neutral axis. So for sigma X, it's positive, and the multiplier is 0 0.99. The distance to the neutral axis for x-axis bending, or mx, is that distance, which happens to be the centroidal distance of 2.038 from the top. For the sigma y, what I'm concerned with is the distance to the neutral axis from point A, which is half the cross-section, or 2.5 inches, because the thing's 5 inches wide. It's negative 0.9285 times 2.5. So I do the calculations, and I'm trying to hurry so this doesn't be too long of a video. This works out to be negative compression 304 KSI. Point B is very similar except I have positive sigma x and positive sigma y. So the numbers are the very similar. I got 0.99. I've still got that distance to the neutral axis from B, 2.038. And I've still got, but now it's positive, 0.9285 times that distance to the neutral axis to the y neutral axis 2.5 and that works out to be 4.34 positive so it's tension sigma c point c has got negative sigma x from the quadrant thing and negative sigma y so that's negative 0.99 now I've got a different y distance. It's the distance from the neutral axis to the bottom of the section. Okay, the whole thing, section is 5 inches tall, and I'm subtracting out that top distance to the neutral axis, 2.038. Sigma y is, I'm concerned with that distance from the neutral axis, which is still 2.5. The stress is negative from sigma y. 0.9285 2.5 is the distance to the neutral axis. I make my calculation and I get negative 5.25 KSI compression. At point D down here on the right side in the inside uh, lower corner of that leg I have negative sigma X and I have positive sigma y. Sigma x, I'm concerned with that distance right there, which is that same 5 minus 2.038. So I have negative 0.99 times 5 minus 2.038. And positive 0.9285. This time I'm concerned with this distance, this horizontal distance from the neutral axis to the inside of that leg. Well, from here out, it's 2.5. And this leg is one inch wide. So this distance from the neutral axis is 2.5 minus one. And you calculate those numbers and you get negative 1.60 KSI. And finally, I've got point E in which case I'm concerned with this distance for sigma x and first I see at point E I've got positive sigma x negative sigma y so I have positive 0.99 that y distance to the top it's 2.038 inches 
but that point E is one inch down, so it's 2.038 inches minus one. One inch right there. Can't write on my tablet right now. And then I have negative 0.9285. And its distance from the y-axis is just like point D was on the other side. It's that 2.5 minus 1. Calculate the numbers and I get negative 0.365 KSI.